Hold up. All right, guys, welcome to my brand new tutorial on singleton pattern. Let's get started. Now, what is a singleton pattern? So this is a pattern that allows us to get one and only one instance of a particular class. What do I mean by that? So it's basically, you know, uh, let's just think of it in real world. Yeah, so let's say that we have a car. Now, in that car, we can have multiple tires, right? We can have multiple headlights, we can have you know, multiple seats, we can have multiple passengers. But what is that one thing that car should have as a unique one? So let's just consider that unique one to be our steering, right? So a, one car can have only one steering, it cannot have multiple steerings. So it's kind of like that, you know, in Java, sometimes you just want just only one instance of a particular class. And the way we get that is by using this singleton pattern. So why is this, why is it that we want only one instance? So there are cases where, let me give you some examples. So in during database uh, connection, you don't want thousand uh, database connections, you just want one. So if you just have multiple copies, it's just waste of memory, waste of processing power, you know, waste of so many other such resources, right? So you, you want to eliminate as much waste as possible and single turn is a great answer for your question that you don't want to waste resources. Now, let me give you another example in Java itself. Our runtime, our Java runtime is single turn pattern. What is runtime? Basically, when we run a program, it's the, it's just run on one instance, and that is called as Java runtime. So let's get started by creating our singleton class. But since I talked about steering, so here we have our steering class, okay? And just forget that you know this this line. I was just testing out something. Anyway. So here we have our steering class and inside our steering class, let's say, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not worried about all the fields of the steering class. I'm considering just the size of the steering class. I'll say private string size, that's it. Now what I want is, I just want one instance. What do I mean by only one instance? Let me show you what I don't want so you can understand what I want. So this is our main, right? PSVM. And then I, I would come here and say steering. Steering one is a new steering. Okay, steering. Steering two is a new steering. All right. Now if I come here and say S out steering one, let me copy this entire line, paste it, and say steering two. If I run this, what's going to happen is, so we, here we have one ID, which is 74A14482, and then this is another ID, and this is not what we want. We want to have 74A14482 throughout our entire program whenever we want a steering instance. No matter what, we just want just only one instance of that particular variable. I hope you understand what I meant. All right, to, to get rid of this, first of all, we don't want someone to outside, someone from outside to just keep, you know, doing a new, right? So the cost for our new, you know, the cost for different IDs here is because we are creating new instances. We don't want new instances. So how do we fix this new instances problem? Make sure nobody creates a new instance. How do I do that? Well, can I, if I can go into my constructor, let me create a constructor having size, and then I'm going to say, first of all, let me get rid of this. And I'm going to make this constructor not public. I'm going to make it private. All right, now size for the sake of convenience, it's always going to be big. Let's not worry much about that. What we are worried though is about 
having somebody initialize steering from outside and then create multiple copies of steering which would which would then lead us to have values like this which are different all right so the next thing is so now that we made uh, steering private if we go back it says hey it's having private access you can't do something like this you cannot do a new from outside so one thing we fixed but let's talk about a case where where you know we want just only one instance how do i achieve that well i'm going to say private steering okay private steering and i'm going to say a unique instance okay and i want to make this a static okay so this is our unique instance now why did i even do this if somebody has to access our steering class then it has they have to access it only using this field of that particular class so this is the idea let me explain that in a much better manner later on but remember a singleton class will always have a unique instance as a field okay now let's uh, continue uh, i'm going to say public static because i want to get this unique instance so i would say public static steering and then i'm going to say get unique instance and so this is our method and if i want to access the unique instance this is what I would do. I would say get unique instance in the class that we want to access. Okay. So now what I'm going to do in this unique instance is I can simply say come, I can come here and say unique instance. That's it. But if I do again, this time it is going to be steering dot get unique instance. And again, steering dot get unique instance, we would still get a null why because we haven't done anything yet so i'm going to just keep this aside at the bottom before we return the unique instance we have to initialize it right otherwise there's no point okay so let's uh, write the logic to initialize the unique instance the first thing that i want to see is check we saw already that it showed up null remember it showed up null that means it is not initialized so we want to see if the unique instance field is initialized. So if unique instance is null, if it's null, that means it is not initialized, then unique instance is a new steering class. And remember, new works out well because we are calling from the steering class. You know, a private method can be called from the class to which it belongs to. So that is why this is having no problems. The compiler is happy. All right. Now that we have something like this, let's see. Let's go back to our main and run it again. Aha, so we have achieved what we wanted. So any number of time you want to, maybe let's see this, steering, steering three, if I want to do new steering, of course, it is not going to work out, right? Because that is what we did by making private. And then what I want to do again is I want to do something like this, steering.get instance, okay? And then I'm going to say s out steering three. Okay, and if I, if I add the semicolon here and then run it, Again, we are going to get the same instance. Wow, we've achieved what we wanted, but it's <laughs> we have not quite yet achieved what we wanted. So this is the basic idea of a single turn. From now on, what we do is going to be called as the modifications for the singleton pattern. But at, at its core, this is the uh, this is the basic idea. Get unique instance as a method, which is going to be a static and then a steering right whatever the class name it's going to return that object and then this is a static so that's the basic idea and then if you continue further then we are trying to optimize our steering class all right so let's get 
into optimizing a steering class you see there are m multiple problems with it can you guess one such problem all right yeah i know it's it's kind of hard to guess because you know when i started i i didn't I didn't, I didn't even think of what could be a problem. So uh, one potential problem we see from this is that whenever there are two threads that are coming in directly, so let's just, let's just say that there are two, uh, two threads coming here. So when both of these threads enter in simultaneously, unique instance would be null. But then what happens is, let's say that thread one goes to sleep and thread two continues to work. Then in that case, so thread two has already got a new copy of the steering class, right? And then threads, thread one, which was sleeping, now wakes up. And then from this point, again, unique instance is now new steering. So we have the second, uh, the first thread also get a, a new instance, which means two threads have two instances. This clearly breaks our entire idea of singleton. So how do we fix this? How do we fix it is by adding this keyword called synchronized. So what is synchronized going to do? Whenever two threads are passing in, right? So basically in a synchronized, what happens is both the threads continue to do their job, but there would be no case where one thread gets a new copy and the second thread gets a new copy. If one thread gets a new copy, it's done deal. The second thread will not continue to get a new copy. So that is the basic idea of synchronized. But actually there is a larger vision to synchronized. I'm not going to talk much about because that is not what we are looking for. But the, at its core, this is the simple idea that we could do. And then again, if we run, we will have no problem, but there is a big catch. You know, since this class is pretty small and everything, it's all cute. You know, it's just 22 lines. We have no problem whatsoever, but let's just say that this was a hefty class. And then there are so many times, you know, this uh, get unique instance was called. I mean, I mean, there are so many things that could slow down. And basically synchronized keyword using it in the class is like a big, big no. Why? Because the synchronized if there is more traffic, I mean, if there is more usage, it would drastically slow down the program's performance. And as a good programmer, we never want that to happen. So public static synchronized is not a good idea because like I said, it causes bottlenecking and therefore slows down our program. Then what could be another alternative way? Well, this is the basic idea. So there is a second approach called as eager loading. What is eager loading? So basically what you do during eager loading is simple. You say upfront, you, you upfront load off that instance. You can say something like this, new steering. Okay. And then all you do is return unique instance. Even in this case, our stuff works perfectly fine. Let me show it to you. You see, it's again getting the same IDs and it's still, sir, sir, pro you know, it still works out well. But there are still catches, you know, there are still problems uh, with uh, eager loading. Uh, I mean, again, multi-threading problems. Yeah, there are so many such uh, problems at this point for eager loading because it's not the best solution. And if somebody uh, argues with you that this is the best solution, then they're probably wrong. So the third approach is called as double locking or lazy loading. Actually, it's called double check locking. And here are some caveats to, uh, caveats to double check locking. So basically you will have private, private volatile static steering, and then you will never do new steering upfront. So eager loading is not at all an option, right? We are considering a better approach. And then what happens is, Let's see. So this at this point, I'm going to discuss the double locking, which is what is most widely used and controversially, quote unquote, the best solution so far, right? Okay, so I'm going to uh, show you how you can do double locking and everything. So basically volatile, I'll explain the usage of volatile in a moment. But let's get again into coding, uh, the logic part of it. So 
Unique instance double equals null. Again, we are doing the same thing, right? So unique instance then is going to be equal to new steering, right? As long as it's null, then initialize a new one. But there's a big but. I'm going to get rid of synchronized. Like I said, it's going to be bottlenecking our program. I'm going to say inside this, I'm going to say, let me just add some proper bracket. Okay, so I'm going to say if inside here and if how do I implement the synchronization mechanism here inside I'm going to say synchronized okay uh, let me okay so I'm going to say synchronized and I'm going to say uh, steering dot class now at this point what we have done is we have checked for synchronization process and inside once it is synchronized you know what is synchronized doing, right? So it's not going to allow multiple threads to have multiple instantiations. So let me continue. If, again, I'm going to do the same checking, which is unique instance is equal to null. Now you might be wondering why on earth are we doing multiple times, you know, the same thing going on and on. The reason is, I'm going to come there, take this off and put it here. Hey, come on. The reason is, let's just assume that the threads are coming in here and then the threads are taken care here. But in the last step, if we don't do this, the same problem might arise. What is that same problem? Let me talk about that problem. And that problem is, you know, when it comes in here, the let's say the first thread which was sleeping now wakes up and then it comes in here and and then it says okay uh, I'm all synchronized which is pretty cool and then it comes and then let's say we did not have this in that case it would have again gotten into a point where it would have initialized a new instance but because we have this the second thread which woke up right now right this the thread that which uh, I don't know if the second thread or the first thread whatever that thread is but the thread that woke up right now, again, if we check that this unique instance is uh, not null, once it confirms that it is not null, then only we have a new instance for the steering class. So that is the basic idea for uh, checking unique instance equals null twice. So the at its core, you can think of uh, <clears throat> this phenomenon as a, a, a fallproof way to check if even by chance any thread is not going to have a different copy other than what was already initialized. As a matter of fact, Singleton is very popular uh, design pattern and, and you should have an idea of this uh, design pattern because at any point you would be required to to build a, a comp an application a complex application which would uh, require you to just have one instance and only one instance so here is the diagram for the singleton class it contains a unique instance field to to sum it up unique instance is always going to be there get unique instance is always going to be there and both of them are going to be the, the class type. Get unique instance would return the class type. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share. Thank you.